Welcome to the Driveway Beers Podcast with Mike and Alex. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share on any platform that you're listening on. All right, welcome back to another show. We're going to do something a little bit different this time. Um, I, uh, I was talking with my wife, and she she works in schools, and she was telling me about this podcast called uh, Soul to Story, and it's a podcast, it was a six-part podcast by Emily Hanford. Um, the website's soldastory.org. I'm not, there, I'm not selling anything with this. I'm just letting you know the website. You can find the podcast, Sold a Story, on any podcast platform you listen on. Whether that's Apple Podcasts, Google, any of them. Uh, you can just go ahead and look it up. It's Emily Hanford, Sold a Story. And for any anyone with a, any parent with a child, especially young elementary school kids, that have noticed that their kids have had trouble reading. This podcast was extremely, extremely insightful as to why. Now, I am going to preface this by saying, listening to the podcast, I I got pissed off. <laughs> um, because I do have one, one, you know, my youngest has trouble reading. Um, my oldest showed signs of this, but she somehow worked herself out of it. Um, but as we kind of talk about this podcast and some of the things that we, we were listening to, um, you'll probably notice that your kids do some of the same things. Um, but before we do that, I want to thank, uh, cheers and spirits, uh, liquor store over in the Arnold station plaza on Ritchie highway. Uh, They've been gracious enough to sponsor this episode, along with a few of our others. Uh, head on over there, grab all your liquor and beer and wine needs over there. Uh, especially if you're looking for something new, they're more than happy to help you find something. Again, it's Cheers and Spirits uh, Liquor Store over on uh, Ritchie Highway in the Arnold Station Plaza. So, I'm not going to name which kid it is. I won't say your kid's name either, but... <clears throat> We've each had kids that have had issues reading. Yep. Uh, for you, is it one or, or two? Just one. Just, Just one. Yeah. The other one worked. It's kind of working his way through. Yeah, it. He's great. Okay. He's got no problem. He, like he's surprisingly good. Yeah. So, for some kids, like they definitely kind of work through it. But essentially, any parent, um, it, if you've ever heard or or been given what's called an F and P score which is essentially, it tells you what level your kid is reading on. And F and P stands for Fontas and Pinnell. Mm -hmm. And Fontas and Pinnell are two ladies that created uh, not only lessons, but also testing uh, uh, instruments for schools to use. And their publisher, Heinemann Publishers, sell these things Two schools to use. So basically, it's kind of like software where you sell a license to use these things. So this way, you can use the program in your schools to teach your kids to read. Um, and forgive me if I'm if I kind of jump around a little bit. Um, I I highly recommend if you want to stop this episode here, go listen to the six part Sold a Story podcast because then the rest of this will make more sense yeah. to you. And the episodes are only half hour long, so it's yeah. it's not like you're going to be there for. You know, a week. It's uh, we both know. binged it two days. Yeah, I mean, it was real quick. Um, but essentially, so it, it all starts back. Um, I want to say it started in the seventies, I believe, with in New uh, Zealand. Yeah, with, well, it, with, her name was Mari Clay. Yes, and she developed this program called Reading Recovery. Um, essentially, she was a teacher. And she noticed kids were having trouble learning to read. And she kind of did some some studies with some kids in New Zealand. And saw, and, and according to her, kids uh, learn to read better by uh, concepts and what she called cueing, which mean, meant like 
little kids could look at a picture and kind of get the gist of what the words were saying, but they didn't have to read the words specifically. Um, so it was, the, it was the idea that kids don't need phonics to learn to read, but use pictures and other things to put the story together. The words didn't matter as much as the concepts. So the system was called queuing and it was based on Maury Clay's research. <coughs> um, I am going to read from notes in this just because I, there's no way I'm going to get all of this right. All right. I, look, this is, we've, we've said in the past, this is not a factual podcast. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Go listen to that podcast. So there's is a factual podcast. Yes. That, that theirs is completely hundred percent factual. <laughs> They'll have all the dates, the timelines, everything that happened. And I'm more react. I'm basically going to give you the overview and the, my reaction to this and my own kids in the, in the way I see my own kid using this program and how she's struggling to learn to read. Um, and we'll kind of get into some more macro stuff with this as well, because there are other implications as far as how this happened. So anyway, so based off of Mari Clay's research, uh, uh, the ladies Fontas and Pinnell, and Lucy Calkins, who's another person who creates documents and, and, and testing materials, they developed the reading programs based on her work. And then Heinemann Publishers is the publisher for both groups, for Lu Lucy Calkins and Fontas and Pinnell. So Heinemann Publishers had a large vested interest in pushing this system. Whether it was good or bad, and we all look, we all talk about big pharma being they're they're pushing their agenda. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the 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 Ministry of Defense, the military, yeah, the, 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 the military right, industrial complex. Right, the, they're pushing their agenda. Yep. Well, publishing is also another big industry, and so is education, <coughs> and education, and, and these publishers, these educational publishers, they net billions of dollars in this. This is not small money. That's how that dude on um, Shark Tank made all his money. Yeah, yeah, Mister so, Wonderful. Yep, and, and they and they get it by selling the books, the workbooks, the reading books, the testing materials, and the licenses to use the yeah. tests. And then there's instruction, like they'll send um, coaches in to do workshops to teach the teachers. None of this stuff is free. It's all they're all making big money off of this stuff. So, so now. This queuing theory that was that was brought uh, brought uh, to the forefront by Maury Clay, it was debunked in the eighties, late eighties, early nineties. Now think about that. I just it, the late eighties, early nineties. It is twenty twenty two. Schools are still using this. Mm -hmm. They are clutching it like they're pearls. They don't want to let go of it. Well, I, and I think if you if you look at why, like uh, people get. They get married to an idea and they get invested in it. Mm -hmm. And then for them to come around and say, and then they'll start defending it when people question it. Well, then when, when knowledge changes, I hate to say the science because that's a word that gets thrown around a lot. But when things change, they're so invested, they don't want to admit that they were wrong. Right. And it's almost like a piece of, they attach their identity to it too. Well, so, and, and we can equate that to things today. We'll, we'll do that later. Yeah. Um, essentially, it, it, the problem with it being used today is that kids are not learning to read. They're being passed through the system. Now, where it's most evident is the inner city schools because that's where a lot of the focus is put on, like mm -hmm. Baltimore City for us. Um the D.C. schools, New York City schools. Chicago. Yeah, so. all those big cities, and it's mostly because <clears throat> that's the easy pickings. Mm -hmm. Scores are low. Everything is low, right? In the suburbs, though, the scores aren't as low, but they are lower than they were 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And they're, they're just... Passing kids through. Yeah. When there and there was an interesting. Um, they were interviewing a teacher. The, the in this podcast, she interviewed a teacher who. Um, she went to a to a poor school. Uh, she's black. She went to a poor black school, and then ended up working for Montgomery County Public Schools, which is near us. And her thought was, "I'm going to go here and work in this rich white school, learn what they're doing, and steal it." 
not steal it, but right. you know, I say steal. I, hey, I'm stealing that. You know, at work all the time. So she's going to take it, go back to the black schools, and then replicate it. Yeah. She's but, hoping for a best practice. Yeah. She's looking for something better. Right. But what she found out was that it wasn't working for them either. Mm-hmm. And the only reason that those kids were doing well is their parents had money to pay for tutoring and everything, so someone to actually teach these kids how to read. And, and that's such a big point in this. Because, okay, because my daughter was having issues with the reading, we t- we took her to this reading club in, in a small bookstore. It's a mom and pop bookstore, but they also, they have a reading specialist on hand mm-hmm. that teaches phonics to kids. So we signed her up and she made immense progress by going there. And in fact, we're going to enroll her again. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that, that point that you were just making there is exactly what we're doing. Yeah. I'm but, paying additional money for my kid to go get reading lessons. And we we did the same thing <laughs> with with our oldest who you know he had I mean he's in a completely different school now. Um but unfortunately you can have all the best intentions in the world to replicate what they're doing at our kids elementary school in a disadvantaged neighborhood in their school but unless those parents have money to send their kids to the same place because I think we sent ours to the same spot if I know what you're talking about. Yep. Um they don't have the money for that. So it just it's dead in the water. Well, it, and I couldn't imagine being a parent and realizing that your kid can't read, but you also don't have the money to do anything about it. Yeah. But then here's the part that pissed me off about all of this. In the educational community, there is enough... There are enough people within that educational community that know this FMP system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And they stay silent. Yeah. Now, luckily for our school district, they are, within two years, they're going to be away from it. Now, why why should my kid? And and that's the thing. For you, and I don't know how to put this delicately, I would be absolutely livid if I were you. Because the school you're sending your kid to is not inexpensive. I'm not putting out there the dollar amount. I'm no, going to do that. It's not. <laughs> but it is not inexpensive. And if our elementary school had used a phonics based system, and I don't know enough about your kid's situation, but I can I'm 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 almost guessing that if there was a phonics based system used in the school or someone at the school said, "I'll pull him out. And I'll, I'll use a phonics-based system, mm-hmm. and I'll help, it'll help him out immensely." Yeah, you might not have to spend that money right now, right? No, and and the thing is, like, when you think about it, like, you know, my wife was she was a stay-at-home mom, and like, in order to send me to the school, she went back to work. Now she's a teacher, ironically enough, a reading teacher, right? Um, but. You know, and the schools, they did this Wilson's thing where they, like, tap the words out and, right. you know, and I don't know the, the I'm, I'm, I'm a dope when it comes to this stuff. I, all the, when I was listening to that podcast and I heard F and P and level this and I had, I was familiar with all of the terms and I heard my wife talking about it, um, with different teachers and going through our stuff with our oldest, like, yeah, you know, his F and P score, he's at level this, he should be at level that. Mm-hmm. And I didn't really understand. I said, oh, like. It's like a test, you know. You got to pass the the, you know, like oh, you, like or like karate, like you know, you start with a white belt and then you get your brown belt. And right. Maybe that's what it was, but it was there's a lot more to it than just that. Well, it, the funny thing as as we keep talking, the next thing that pisses me off comes out. So not only are you paying this money when it never had to happen to begin with. Because someone didn't have the courage to stand up and say, this system doesn't work. It hasn't worked for 20 years. Why are we still doing it? Right. Because I, I remember the conversations that you and I had, and they weren't as extensive as our wives had. Yeah. But they pretty much dismissed your concerns. Mm-hmm. Which is shocking. Look, the school our kids goes to is rated quite high. Yeah. However, it doesn't, it's not working. And I think there are probably a lot more kids that are having these issues with the reading, but they keep pushing them along. And I think a lot of parents that don't 
get involved don't know. Yeah. So they we, don't know. So thankfully, because my wife, you know, knows, you know, knows her stuff. She, you know, we, we even asked in kindergarten and then in first grade for them to hold him back and they wouldn't do it. Apparently holding back looks bad for their stats. Right. Um, well then I guess it was, uh, third going into fourth. They brought it up. It's like, no, 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 no. He knows, he knows what time it is now. We could have done that when he was five and he wouldn't have known, but now you want to do it when he's like, he, he, he's going to know. Right. He's going to, he's already tall anyway. He's going to stand two heads taller than everyone in his class. Like that ship has sailed people. We suggested it three years ago. You shot it down. Now you want to bring it back on the table. No, that, that items, all, that's not, you know, we're not negotiating on that one. Um, but listening to the podcast, there was a lady that was telling a story where she asked to have her daughter held back, and they said no. Right. That, oh, she'll get it. Uh, so kids learn that she'll get it. She'll get it. Well, you know, if you're just kind of looking at the word and making these associations based upon the picture, and they went through this whole checklist, you know, like, it does it make sense? Does it look right? Like, does it look right? What, what do you mean, does it look right? Is it the right word or not? Yeah. Um. And apparently, no, like, because we learned how to read using phonics. Correct. In the 80s. That's how they taught it. So we learned, we, we were, thankfully enough, we were not able to see, to experience this disaster. Right. And, and I think during COVID, when there was a lot of uh, school at home, mm-hmm. and there were parents home with the kids. I think the parents kind of wised up and said, well, wait a minute. What, like, <clears throat> for example, the other day, you know, a- after I found out about this, I went out and got my daughter uh, a, f- a book with, uh, it was a set of books, but teaching phonics, right? Mm-hmm. So she's sitting, she's, and she's going through, she's reading, she's reading the book, and she's doing okay, but she came across a word she didn't recognize. And rather than sounding it out, she made up a word. And my wife and my wife goes, you know, why, why did you say that word? And she goes, well, because I looked at the picture, and she looked at me and just rolled her eyes. Yeah, because now we know. Yeah, and it makes sense to me too because I remember sitting there and reading with my oldest, and it was these little tiny books that had pictures on every page. Yep, and like a couple sentences, and I would look at his his, uh, he'd say a word that just. That wasn't there. Not only was it what, not there, mm-hmm. it just didn't make, like, it, it, nothing in the word that was written could you even got, it wasn't like bling and bring, right. uh, you know, mixing a letter up. Or it, it wasn't even, like, you know, you, you couldn't make that word with those letters no matter how you arrange them. Right. It it's wasn't like, even similar. It's like, the, it's like the word boom and wash. Yeah. Completely different words. Yeah. The only thing they had in common was the number of letters. In yeah, it. exactly. Like the size of the letter, yeah. the the size of the word, and I, and and I remember you know getting frustrated with him and saying, "No, that's not the word. What are you doing? Sound it out." So, and he didn't even know what sounding. Out, he didn't know th- th- what that meant. Right. I might as well have been telling him to like tap dance. Well, in, in that part, like where you like what you just said, like you're telling, like you're yelling at him, right? Yeah. I, I'm yelling at my daughter, yeah. thinking that she's just being lazy. Yeah, or she's not doing the like she's she's not paying attention. Like, in pay class. attention, dude. Right, yeah. pay attention in class. Are you paying attention when you're when your teacher's talking to you? Like, sound out the word. That's not that letter isn't even close. Right. Like, I, like, I'm literally getting on this kid's case, just demoralizing her mm-hmm. because I'm thinking she's not doing the work. Yeah. When in reality, she's she doing is doing the work. She's, she's doing, doing exactly what they told her. Yeah. Yeah, they're sitting there telling her, oh well. <clears throat> And I remember listening to this teacher doing, like, in the podcast, doing this thing where it was like this this three step checklist that they'd go through, and you know, I'm like, wow, that's how he was learning. I'm on a completely different wave. I felt awful because, like, here I am saying, dude, what the what the f is the matter with you? I'm dropping f bombs with my little kid, but <laughs> right, no. that's what's going on in my head, right? You know, and he's doing exactly what they told him to do. I'm telling him something completely different. Yep. Sound it out. Yep. Says, sound it out. What are you talking about? Sound it yeah, out. He has no clue what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Or, or, my, my daughter has no clue what sound it out even means. Right. And it, it, the problem, it, it, one of the biggest problems I have 
and, and this is why some of these new bills coming out about parents having the knowledge of what's being taught in the school. Mm-hmm. Look, someone can tell me, oh, we're using the Fontas and Pinnell method to teach kids how to read. That's great. But I had no idea what that was. No. I didn't realize it was this dumb. <laughs> I didn't realize you weren't teaching my kid how to read. Right. So, yes, you, you were giving me the... Like, you told me the method, mm-hmm. but you didn't tell me it didn't teach my kid how to read. Yeah. If it, you didn't tell me that this method was debunked 20 years ago. Right. And yet you're still using it. And and this school district that uses tax dollars is still paying for it. Mm-hmm. And I'm supposed to be cool with this. Right. I'm supposed to butt out of my kid's education. And just let you because, people run because it. Because you know better. Yeah. The administrator... And look, I'm not... This is not bashing teachers. Teachers are teaching the method that they're given. Yeah. But the administrators in these schools... From the Board of Education to the administration to the freaking principals in these schools that know this program was junk. And kept pushing it. And kept pushing it for 20 more years. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be okay with that. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to trust the educators. Yeah. Now, I'm just talking about reading. Don't get me started on the math. Mm -hmm. This Common Core math... Listen, my daughter brings home math, right? <clears throat> and she can, and, and she does it the way they teach her. Mm-hmm. It's the most backwards way to do math. And you want to, you don't want to know the reason they give. Well, it's this way the kids will be able to do math in their head. <laughs> Have you seen the, the the size of the sheet of paper that you, oh, that, that a kid has to do to do <laughs> long multi uh, to do two digit multiplication? Oh yeah. It's, they're drawing squares and pictures and yeah, cir- like drawing circles and coloring circles in. And look, I understand it. So I don't understand it the way they teach it. I think you teach it the correct way. But when I look at it and I see what they're trying to do, it's how I do math in my head. So if someone said like, you know, what's uh, 37 times 9? What I do in my head is I multiply 37 times 10 and then subtract 37 from it. Right. And that's kind of what they're doing. But that's because I don't have a, number one, a calculator, because I would do that with a calculator. Mm-hmm. Number two, I don't have a piece of paper to do it on. All I have is my head, and I'm trying to get to a rough estimate. So it's right. 370 minus 37. Right. So it's going to be about 335, somewhere in that, in that, you know, or three, whatever. You right. see how good I have at math. But that's where, that's kind of how I'm running through it, you know? Right. Um, but that's what you do, like, that mental math to figure out quick, like, oh, what's my miles per gallon? What's my fuel burn? What's whatever tr- you're trying to figure out? Like, how much fertilizer do I need? Well, I don't know my lawn's exact size, but I know that it's roughly, you know, a tenth of an acre and I need X amount of fertilizer to throw on the lawn. It's not trying to figure out exactly. If you're trying to teach them how to do it exactly, do it the right way. Well, the, the problem is you're trying to teach them the shortcut without giving them the basics. Yeah. Like, you're not teaching them how to do the actual math. You're teaching them, like, if a kid's got to go do multiplication, <clears throat> I'm sorry, you're not going to have paper around so you can draw boxes. <laughs> and but what, boxes and no- But what happens when you're then getting into more advanced stuff? Like, say you're getting into algebra or quadratic equations and all this other stuff that has a whole bunch of operations that you have to do just to get to the point where it's a simple fraction at the end. Mm-hmm. And what are you going to do, like, reams and reams of paper right. to draw boxes and co- and circles and then color the circles in and <laughs> to see what, what direction the wind's coming from? And it, It's going to take you 15 minutes to do one math problem. Yeah. No one's got time for that. Yeah. And then, so, wrapping the reading back into it, my oldest son was not good at reading. Now, he's also dyslexic, so that falls into it. But he would then go, and the one thing he was really good at was math. But then they took the one thing he was good at and they ruined it by making it all word problems in second grade. Right. So they had to go and read using this BS method that he didn't know how to read from, but there's no picture this time right. for him to refer back to. And then rather than writing the answer out, they had to write a number sentence. Right. The answer had to be in a sentence. Right. So Why? it just exacerbates the problem. The, the it, final it, answer is six eggs. Yeah. That's the only word you need to have in there is <laughs> eggs. 
But no, it had to be John. Uh, John purchased six eggs from the store. So it, it literally brought his reading problem into his math. Yeah, which made him probably hate math, which he was actually good at. Absolutely. And and that's a whole other topic about. Imagine how many kids are going home saying, "I hate school." Yeah. All because of this stupid reading program mm-hmm. that didn't teach kids how to read. Now the kids are frustrated. Yeah. Like they don't know any better in kindergarten and first grade, but you start hitting second, third, and they start to think, "I can't read." I, well, I, I'm not, and, and now it's, "I'm not good at this," and I hate it. Yeah. That's the equivalency they're gonna make. Yeah. Kids love positive reinforcement. That's why I don't play basketball or volleyball because I'm right. terrible at it. Right. I can't jump, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to go play basketball against some 6'9 dudes with some hops. Yeah. Right? Because my, my, my jump shot's going to get blocked. Yeah. Because there ain't no jump to it. I'll blast a hockey puck, though. Sure. So I'll do that. <laughs> but look, but my, th- my thing is, though, if these kids aren't experiencing any kind of success in reading because they're not being taught to read. They're going to start to get down on themselves. They're going to start to hate it. And they're not going to want to go back to school. Mm-hmm. And that, in my in my opinion, it it pushes the problem exponentially. Yeah. You're now compounding the problem as they get older and older and older. Unless they just happen to be one of the kids that can figure it out. Figure it out. They're like, it sounds like your oldest figured it out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but what, what ends up happening is you've got your... And, this is my wife told me this, you know, from kindergarten first, second, you're learning to read. Third grade, then you start reading to learn. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have the ability to read at all, <laughs> and now you need to read this stuff to be able to learn more, well, now you're just completely, um, you just they're they're just they, they've got no traction at all. Well, and there was something they said in that podcast about us. Once you hit a certain age, there's no catching up. Yeah. I mean, imagine being like fifth grade. You can't read. They pushed you through. And, and you are now going into sixth. You're going into middle school and beyond with a, with one hand tied behind your back. Yeah. And you're still expected to learn at grade level. Mm-hmm. And the funny part was, what, what year did age, what, what year did George W. Bush get elected? Uh, 2000. 2000. Oddly enough, the one of the dumbest sounding presidents we've ever had, Hill, Hillbilly George. Strategery. Strategery. This guy. <laughs> this guy was the one that tried to get the, to try to right the ship. Yeah. And apparently it was uh, a pet project of his mother, Barbara, and his wife, Laura. Yeah, because Laura was a librarian. Correct. Um, and then... Uh, I remember Barbara Bush's big thing all was about reading because Nancy Reagan's was say no to drugs. And Mm -hmm. I think Barbara Bush's had something to do with reading. So apparently what happened was one of the first things George W. Bush did when he got into office was he started, he got funding for a, for uh, funding reading programs in schools. But the stipulation was that the program had to be rooted in science and by now, in the year 2000, this FNP and Lucy Calkins methods were, they were not well thought of uh, via the science. We'll, we'll throw that word out yeah. there again. The science. This, the science. You know, this wasn't, according, this wouldn't have, Anthony Fauci wouldn't have called this the Anthony Fauci of science, basically. <laughs> like, he, he was not going to vouch for this. Yeah. It wasn't that. But, so, they even had it in the legislation that it had to be pro- a proven reading teaching method. And the FMP was not a proven reading teaching method. Now, I'm probably botching exactly how it was worded in there. And again, soldastory.org, soldastory is the podcast name. Search for it on any platform. Again, it, I am literally telling you to go listen to another podcast. Yeah. Um. <coughs> He tried to make it so that those two programs could not apply for the money and get put in the schools. Well, of course, you know, Heinemann Publishers, it's a big name, had a lot of money to lose. And they basically went to the Department of Education and said, look, they asked if it would be if it, if it would be eligible. They said no. They said, well, how can we rewrite? What do we need to rewrite in here 
so then it will be eligible. Mm-hmm. And I guess they tweaked a couple things, and they still got money for it. And that's how it still ended up in the schools. Because w- one of the things that happened was in 2001, 9-11 happened. So W. Bush's his, uh, concentration got pulled in another direction. I mean, they were still doing this reading uh, initiative, but obviously his brain probably it was, it wasn't his first priority anymore. Yeah. So this snuck through. But the, again, though, it, it kept sneaking through. And again, that's why I'm more... I'm more, I'm, I'm more upset with school districts, the boards of education, the administrations and school districts that keep, that kept using this thing. Yeah. Like, like I said, it's still used today. Like my, it's literally used in my kids' elementary school today. Yeah. And they all know it's garbage. Mm-hmm. But either they don't have the pull to get it removed because someone someone within the board of education if for our district buys this thing someone's cutting the check like there, there's always a buck that stops somewhere yeah. and we don't know who now that being said we just got a new superintendent and it sounds like he is it, from from everything that I've heard recently within 2 years that program's gone mm-hmm. which is great yeah why it can't be next year i don't know I mean, shoot, what's the worst case? We drop it and we buy, we literally go buy hooked on phonics. I mean, think, think I mean, well, and here's the other thing. Oh, well, we, you know, we have this for two more years. But I, I know how they, how government entities piss money away. So, okay, so you have it for another two years, you don't use it. I'm sure there's all kinds of crap you have laying around that you're still paying for that you don't use. Right. So just throw that on the, the pile till the deal expires. Um, now, I think my middle, he ended up learning phonics somehow and i might have it the in his first grade reading he ended up in this program called foundations yes so that's where my daughter is now yeah so, so is he Col- still is he still in it no colton tested somehow he was doing really well reading and he knew all his sight words and i guess that's something you get into later the sheets of sight words <laughs> but they were trying to fill this program, and in his class, the way he did it was enough to get him into foundations, which my wife and I are like, well, he's so smart. He's doing great. How are we missing the, the how's he missing it? Like, I was like, what's, what the hell is he doing in that? But I think it's the best thing for him because he learned all that phonics. Yeah. And, that, and that's, so that's what's happening now with my daughter. Yeah. So she wasn't in it last year, but she qualified to go into this year. Yeah. So... Her and a couple other kids from her class go into another classroom to do the foundations, mm-hmm. and it teaches some phonics. Yeah, and it's it, it's made a huge difference for her. I mean, along with the extra reading help. But mm-hmm. in my opinion, if you if you let's say you're paying for this foundations thing, it's it's better than what you're using. Make yeah. that the primary uh, tool. Yep. Like, why are we even using the other thing? Mm-hmm. And it, it 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 just amazes me. Again, twenty years this thing has been known to be crap, and people just they they just they held on to it like a cult. Like like people would literally go to trainings, and it was like you go and it's the hype machine, you know? Hey, and like it was like a party, like they have the dance music going, yeah. the conventions. <clears throat> I mean. For all the ladies out there, it's it's kind of like the Lula Row thing, where <coughs> you got sucked into being a, a salesperson. Just pay your five thousand dollars and you're in. Mm-hmm. Well, now you got to pay. You got to pay in a little bit extra here. You got to pay. A, a oh, we're night- changing this line, and you have to get rid of all that other line that you paid for. And no, you can't sell it anymore because it's not. Off, it's a retired. I forgot what the hell they called it. Right, because a, a friend of mine, his wife sold that. Cra- he had a whole room in his house full of Lula Rue, and like they'd retire it, and like yeah. they weren't even allowed to sell it. Yeah, it's like that's retired, like verboten. And 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 then they were encouraged to recruit more cultists. Yeah, and that's what this reading program did. And not that they were selling it, but they were being told that this is the way that kids learn. Mm-hmm. And. 
I get it. If you're not a scientist and you didn't do the research and you were looking for something that was better for the kids to learn, and this is what was being pushed, that this is it. This is the magic. This is the magic pill. Yeah. You're going to do it. But here's the, my problem is once it was proven to not be the magic pill anymore, you kept doing it for 20 more years. Not two years. Not yeah. one year. 20 more years. Mm-hmm. And, and there are some places that are still going to keep going with it. Yeah. I mean, we're just, I mean, I, and I'm going based on a rumor that it's going to get swapped out in the school district. Yeah. By then, though, my kids are out of elementary school. But if you have generations of teachers who this is how they were taught to teach people how to read, and this is all they know, you know, and I know that when they went to Common Core, a lot of teachers had problems with it because all of a sudden, like, one year they're teaching standard fourth grade math. Mm Mm-hmm. The very next year, oh, Common Core, you got to teach it this way. They're like, I don't even know this way. Um, so now if you have all these people that are used to doing, because you're talking about the, the, the F&P score, which has to do with the accuracy and all this stuff. And it's weird because, you know, if the, you know, say the sentence is, um, the cat sits on a log, right? Or the cat sat on a log. But the kid reads, um the cat sat on a tree, they get credit for being accurate because a tree and a log are similar. Right. But it's completely inaccurate because tree is T-R-E-E and log is L-O-G. Right. So how did you get tree out of log? You're not reading. No. You're guessing. Yeah. You're you're guessing the concept. And that's what Logan, and and that's what my oldest was doing. And I'm like, Dude, you're just guessing. And no, I feel like I keep going back and I feel so bad because he was doing exactly what they told him to do. And here is mean old dad saying, Dude, you're just guessing. Why are you just you're just guessing what the word is? And I, I the funny thing is though, those are the exact words I'm saying to my kid. Mm-hmm. Because we were taught to use phonics. Yeah. How do you get the T R sound out of an L? Right. Right? For for my oldest dude. Your name starts with an L. Right, <laughs> right yeah. <laughs> you know? I, I feel horrible for these kids because how many how many other kids you know, probably got the same talking to that we gave our kids? Oh, yeah. And they're sitting there going like... And imagine the frustration. Like the, just, They probably just felt hel- hopeless. Yeah, and they didn't know how to explain to us that, no, this is what... Because like, if this was happening now... Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, my boss came to me and said, why are you doing it this way? And I said, well, because that's how these idiots taught me how to do it. Oh, okay. Well, that's the dumb way. This is, oh, okay, cool. But he couldn't, he, they can't even articulate that. They can't even go and say, like, well, no, this is what these morons are telling me to do. Right. The, you know, oh, well, that's stupid. Well, let me try, like, look, this is this letter shaped this way makes this sound. You, you give them a basic phonics lesson. Well, I mean, they're probably so, they were probably so, like, confused as to what we were saying like what do you mean sounded out yeah and we're saying well where'd you get this from and they're not and they're still trying to figure out sounded out right to even tell us where they learned how to do that yeah and like, i i could only imagine in a kid's head n- now you're just confused as hell mm-hmm. you you think you're doing awesome you got a parent in your ear wondering how you're getting that word from that from those letters yeah and you're st- you're like but no that's what i'm supposed to do that's what i'm so now especially if you redo them at night they're probably going to bed at night oh they're done they're they, toast and, and they're probably they're probably like all frustrated and aggravated then they go so they're going to bed upset yeah they're waking up hoping they're not going to get yelled at the next day for reading mm-hmm. and i mean knowing knowing now though I know that. I know that there's no shot in that school. My kid's gonna learn how to read. Yeah, this is not happening. Yeah. So here we go again. We I gotta pay more money mm-hmm. to a reading specialist so that my kid can learn phonics. Yeah. And I'm buying all these phonics books. Like I gotta catch my kid up. You know. And I, I, I like I said, imagine how many parents aren't even paying attention. Mm-hmm. Most parents don't read their kids. Yeah. Or read or read with them. They they just assume that the school is teaching them how to read. Mm-hmm. And there's really no reason for them to think otherwise. There really isn't. Yeah. 
I'm sending my kid to school. They're going to learn how to read, write, and do arithmetic. And that's what schools do. That's just, this is how it goes, right? Yeah. Well, apparently, no. Because I didn't have to. I mean, and I'm no genius. I'm, you know, I'm pretty much a half a moron. I didn't have to. My mom and dad didn't take me to tutoring. You know, we we had our oldest at one time going to three. He used to go to tutoring four out of five nights a week, some form of tutoring. And it's like, he's going around playing. So here I am paying all kinds of extra money to un-F what he's learning all day. What? And that's another thing. But not even knowing that this is how it is. Um, and then, you know, my wife, who's a teacher, knowing, but that's how she was taught to teach. Well, the other thing is, like, I guess. I don't know how she was taught to teach because I don't know anything about it. But but, but let's say, <clears throat> you know, we send the kids to a tutor on how to read using phonics. Now they go to school the next day, and the teacher's teaching them that fucked up method, fucked up method on how to, how to read. Yeah. And if they don't answer the questions like that teacher wants them to answer it, she's going to give them a bad grade. Yeah. Because of that screwed up system. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, she could read better than... Probably, she's going to be able to read better than 75% of the kids in that class. Yeah. Because we got her extra help. Now, is she going to fail? Because she's not going to do it that fucked up way? Right. And well, you don't care. You're not advancing from level J to level K. Right. What? <laughs> well, and the, and the other... like, So, my wife... She had my daughter read a book on like an L. Uh, whatever level that is. Yeah. She said, well, the teacher says she's on an L. So she went and got a book that's supposedly an L level. She's like, there's no shot she's an L. Mm-hmm. She's like one or two levels before that. So that's another instance where they're just pushing her through. Yep. Well, then there was another another point that they brought up. Like, the kids are going to recognize the letters, they the, the words they see the most. So, and the thing they brought up, like, if a, if a, if a dad reads their kid a bunch of books about baseball, the kids are going to pick up baseball terms. Right. So if they're reading a book about baseball, they might be a level L. But if they're reading a book, but the thing is, that's not reading then. Right. Because if you're doing, if you've reached a level of proficiency, the book should be about anything. You go from baseball to airplanes, and you can read words. You should read baseball terms and aviation terms and be able to understand what they are just based, but that's not what they're teaching them. You're not going to be able to read about a new topic, but you haven't seen the words before. Right, because you look at it and you're like, you know, aileron, which is a flap. Like, none of the, those words are not in baseball. Flop might be, but, <laughs> but they'd say flop, you know? Right. Um, so, but yeah, that's not reading. That's just, it's all, I almost saw that because I was trying to process this like, so what are the kids seeing when they're when they're learning how to read this way? Is it almost like hieroglyphics, like just the word word? When they see letters in those shapes and there's something to reference it to, mm-hmm. then do they say, "Oh, okay, well that in this context, context, that collection of shapes, that image, then becomes word, like just like, like an emoji." You mm-hmm. know, is that what they're learning how to do? like just read through via emoji? So, and she kind of brought up in the podcast about it being political. Okay. She said 26 states now don't approve the method. Well, if it's political, I can pretty much tell you which 26 states it is. Mm -hmm. This is, this is where I'm going to get heated. The teachers union and the department of education are usually in lockstep as far as curriculums go. If both entities, and the Department of Education definitely knew this was debunked because they knew it as far back as George W. Bush's turn. Mm-hmm. Where's the union that represents all these teachers across the country to say no? This is not good for the kids. Yeah. This program is no good. Stop using it. Mm -hmm. Is it because they're getting money from the publishers? 
the uh. <laughs> and, 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 and we've talked about this. This is my problem with big unions. <clears throat> the unions and the union administrations are for themselves. They pull in hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in salary, sometimes millions. Who knows what kickbacks they're getting on the back end? Yeah. Who knows if Heinemann Publishing is kicking back some money to Randy Weingarten, who's the head of the teachers' union. Yeah. Just to get her to shut up. You don't have to do anything. Just don't say that our program sucks. Yeah, just hush money. Or that our program has been scientifically proven to be garbage. Yep. And that way we can keep pushing it, and these other... Uh, how many states are left? 24? Uh, yeah. These other 24 states, so we can make our billions. Just keep your mouth shut, Randy. Mm-hmm. That puts her teachers in a crap position because they're stuck teaching this shit system. Yeah. Even though she's supposed to represent them, not the publisher. Yeah. Never mind the fact if the National Teachers Union isn't on the side of children, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Now you're hurting my goddamn kid. Mm hmm. And that to me, that's the biggest thing I can't get my head around. All of these pro fucking professionals knew that this program was shit for the kids. Yeah. And they pushed it anyway. Pushed it, pushed it, pushed it for 20 fucking years. Mm hmm. It was proven that that F and P model from Mari Clay was the worst model to use to teach children how to read, and you pushed it, and you pushed it, and you freaking pushed it, and you made it so my kid can't read. Yeah, and then you pushed her through the fucking system, mm -hmm. and then you wonder why you got parents. All up in these board meetings, yelling at the Board of Education. Now, it might be about some other things, but now you're trying to tell them the butt out of the... Parents shouldn't have a say in what they're they teaching. Don't know, they they don't know any better. Leave it to the professionals. <laughs> well, apparently, either you don't know better either, because you can't teach my kid how to goddamn read Yeah, because of money. Yeah, it's either either you're too stupid and there's too... too they're both bad. The better one is you're too stupid to know this doesn't work. Or the worst one, and probably more likely, is they're greasing the wheels. They better hope they're too stupid to know. Yeah. Because if it's the other thing, and it's corruption, then they're only seeing the beginning of what these parents are going to do. Yeah. Because you're... Look, you can do a lot of things to an individual, to a grown individual. You can do a lot of things to them before mm -hmm. they push back. But when you, when you fuck with their kids... Yeah. So the You're in a whole out. world of hurt. Yeah. And just the fact that the, the NEA had the DOJ write that letter that parents going to these uh, Board of Education meetings should be classified as domestic terrorists. Yeah. This That union should be disbanded tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Because now, now it's causing harm to children. I'm sorry, you, you, you're you trying to make a whole army of dummies who can't read. Yeah. Who will just go along with whatever you say. Mm hmm Oh, no, you can trust us. We're the good guys. Yeah. And you got the other dummy, trust the science. <laughs> trust the science. Yeah. The, si the science. You know, I am, or I am the science. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you did you fund gain of function research? Oh no no, but we did fund research in how to uh, manipulate viruses and how to make them more potent. Right. That's gain of function research, you dummy. <laughs> right? Did you buy all that beer? Right. Did you drink all that beer? Uh, no, but I did open it and take it out. I took it out of the fridge and I opened it, and then I poured it into a glass and I consumed it. So you did drink it all. Well, I, I didn't drink it. I consumed. I it. didn't. I didn't drink it. <laughs> I just needed it to moisten my throat. Right. <laughs> it's like, how, and people wonder why. Like they wonder why there's distrust of government. Yeah. It. It's like because of this. Like, like 
they, they come out and they just flat out lie to your face. Mm-hmm. And they want an army of dummies who just believe it. Yeah. Oh, okay. It just it, okay. You're right. Was, how can I? You're right. You weren't drinking the beer. It was just making your throat moist. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's not the same thing at all. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Just shut up and and you know, shut up and do it. And, but I, and, I, and I think with this, I think you had so many people that were so married to it, and I think that the alternative to say that, hey, this was wrong. We've been doing the wrong thing. That's tough. For so long, yep. especially when you have people that aren't getting, it's probably pretty easy to get people to just do it when you could go and say, hey, you know, like, because when you think about it, like, man, if I was a teacher, I've been teaching kids how to read. They're not, no one knows how to actually read. I'm doing it the wrong way. That's what I was told. But now you're like, well, if I admit it, then I admit that I was doing it the wrong right, So you kind of right. just. Ignore it. You turn a blind eye to it. You just press on. It's a, it's um, a cultist mentality. Like where you, you you got brought into the cult thinking it was the right thing, mm-hmm. and and maybe maybe at one time it was. It was yeah. believed to be the science. Yeah. And then that switched, and you and you're like, no, no, no. This is what I was taught, and and someone's still telling you it is still the way to do it. Mm-hmm. And like, okay, no, this person said it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, I, there, I wasn't duped. Yeah. Nobody, nobody wants to admit they were duped. It's it's not a fun thing. Yeah. So they keep going with it. And and, and I, so part of me really doesn't blame some of these teachers. I blame the people that were paying for it. Yeah. That knew better. The people or, or the people that should have known better. Mhm. And, yeah. and and there were there were people with the correct credentials saying it wasn't right. Yeah, and 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 they did it anyway. Yeah. To me, that's criminal. Mm-hmm. Now I'm not saying you go lock people up, but you know, starting tomorrow, get rid of the program. It doesn't work. Right. It's just like if you're if you're given a drug that you know is bad. Mm-hmm. Like say you determine all of a sudden that a medicine's bad. Like you should immediately pull it off the shelf or a medical procedure. Yeah. Like stop doing that right away. Yeah. Um. I mean, the FAA is great at it with airplanes. Like, uh, uh, they issue those airworthiness directives, the ADs, and then it happened with the Boeing. I think it was a seven thirty seven Max. Yep. Um, they grounded that entire fleet. Yes, like, they did. Boom! They're not flying. They they almost crushed Southwest. Yeah, because that's what they flew. Mm-hmm. But they but that was the right thing to do at the time. Yeah, and the, but ima- if you use this mentality, yeah, you would have just kept flying them. Yeah. And not, and not, well, oh, I'm just so married to this, man. It's just such a, you know, we're so committed to this jet. Yeah. Well, they're falling out of the sky, right. you know? Um, so that's kind of, you know, but so it can be done. It's shown that there's a, groups that, but I guess if no one's really dying right away, you know, it's hurting them. But is it like, I think, you know, so anyone has like millennials or, What's the next? What's the one after millennial? I forget. Is Gen Z. Zennial? Is that it? No, I think we're Zennials. I thought I was Gen X. Yeah, but like we're the Gen X. So we're the we're the part of Gen X that like knows how to use computers and phones and stuff, but doesn't need to. <laughs> right. But we can l- survive without them. I can still use microfiche if I need to. Right. <laughs> like we remember just having a phone in our in in the kitchen. Right. If you want to call your friends, you have to call and talk to you know. Um, Whereas the people after us don't know any different, and the people before us are like, eh, I don't know, I have to leave, a, you know, I'm afraid of pu- anything technology. So right. I think it's Gen Z or whatever who's been completely brought up in this. Yeah. And, you know, I have some, you know, have seen, like, the written communication is just, it's, it's awful. Um, they say, oh, it's because they spend too much time on their phones. Well, maybe it's because they learned this garbage way to read. If you can't read, you can't write. Well, that's the other part. I mean, how how much is, has it affected writing? I mean, yeah, you're right. If if you if you're learning to read by cueing concepts based on pictures, that, that's certainly not going to help you write. Yeah, and especially it's not going to help you write coherently. Is, isn't that what people who are like functionally illiterate do? Mm-hmm. Like you'll they'll say they'll go to the to the um. To McDonald's, and they want a. They know they want to eat 
a Big Mac. And Big Mac's the first picture. Number one. I don't, I don't even say the name. Yeah. I know they can just one. say a number one, and then the number one comes out based on the picture, and that's what they wanted. So they don't. They didn't read that it was a Big Mac. They just said, give me a large number one with a Coke. Right. And they or, can see the price. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah. They have no idea what's on the Big Mac until they eat it. Right. So <laughs> by teaching how to, and I'm using air quotes, read this way, aren't you then making a whole generation of essentially functionally illiterate people? Yeah, pretty much. Because I've read some of these emails from some of these these young cats, and it's like, dude, what what are you doing? Like, this this email is going out through through the entire organization, and you sound like a complete moron. Um, But that's just how they write, you know? Yeah. I, I, I I truly feel bad for the kids. Because the, there's no there's no fault of their own in this. It's it was literally some adults, a lot of adults that are making a lot of bad decisions. Yep, and making a lot of money, and making a ton of money. Yeah, because in the they added up all the, they took the top thirty school districts or whatever, and added up the money they spent in a year, and it was something like two hundred thirty million dollars on to. The Heinemann Publishing. Yeah. It's like, think of how much money they made. And that was just the big ones. Right. Right. Yeah. Now you've got the smaller ones that did it too. And then with that kind of coin coming in, you can keep some bullshit going for a long time. Well, look, they, at, <clears throat> look at Pfizer. You know, they're... <laughs> so, safe brought to you by Pfizer. Safe and effective. Safe yeah. and effective. I mean, it's, it's the brainwash. If we, it's like if you tell someone something three times, it sticks. Yeah, that's why. Like when 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 you hear a commercial, they'll tell you the phone number three times. Yeah, so that way the phone number sticks in your head. Mm-hmm. It's also why a phone number is, is seven digits. Yeah, because that cadence, you know, five 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 five. Yeah, that cadence sticks in your head. Yep, it's on purpose. Yeah, and. The funny part, so Lu- I guess Lucy Calkins now, she doesn't advocate against her program. Mm-hmm. She doesn't advocate for it, though. Heinemann still sells it, though. And Who's still this, buying it? And they still, the, the other 24 states were still viable. Yeah. Um, Including this one, I guess. This one, yeah. <laughs> this is one of them. Yeah. Obviously. I mean... Because I mean, I, I know for a fact we still use Fontas and Pinnell. Yeah, I mean, our kids get an F and P score. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's supposedly it takes like thirty minutes to do a an eval, <laughs> and the teacher has to sit there with them. And well, I, I, the other part of it is, is that could you could you steer the Titanic tomorrow? I could argue that after like the Christmas break, you could easily switch to a program like Hooked on Phonics. Yeah, it's easily accessible and it's off the shelf. Yeah, and it's for school. It's cheap. Mm-hmm. And you're talking about you can buy if you have like twenty classrooms. I think the Hooked on Phonics program is only like fifty bucks. Yeah, even if it's a hundred. Yeah, five thousand bucks. You got your whole. You got your program. Mm-hmm. I guarantee they paid more for this Fontas and Pinnell shit. Oh yeah, probably paid a couple mil. Yeah, right. You could pivot tomorrow it, with with Hooked on Phonics. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying Hooked on Phonics is your long-term solution, but if you needed something quick to get rid of this, I mean, it, the literally the program is going to teach itself. It's done by video. Yeah. But okay, kids, time for a video. Mm-hmm. Let's learn to read. Yeah. Um. So, and... and it does definitely play into like today's politics too, <coughs> where people are so entrenched in their beliefs, and nobody wants to be made a fool of. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to be the one that did or taught the bad thing, even though there was so much evidence. You know, sometimes you just don't want to hear it, right? So yeah. you're not looking for the information, so you don't find it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And nobody want nobody wants to play the fool. Like, oh crap, 
all this, some of this info on COVID was wrong. It really did come from the Wuhan lab. Yeah. Meanwhile, for almost a year, oh, it didn't come from a lab. Yeah. And then, of course, like the New York Times says it comes from a lab, and now it comes from a lab. You're right. But the New York Times was a, a year late yeah. on that. It's almost like you're living in two different, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Time paths? Uh, mm -hmm. Like someone's a year ahead of you. Yeah. And their knowledge. Solely because of where they got it from. And then once your news source finally comes around and says, oh, we screwed this up. Because mm -hmm. the evidence was so overwhelming and you couldn't cover up what you were saying anymore. Yeah. You, that you had to come out with the truth. <coughs> you know. It's almost like it's like the Hunter Biden laptop. Mm -hmm. You know, the left the left news didn't report on it or said it was fake Russian disinformation. Mm -hmm. The New York Post reported on it in 2020, right before the election, and it was and it was garbage. Washed. It was debunked. Right? It was yeah. all this is nothing. In fact, they they wouldn't even give it the time of day. Yeah, and it got flagged on Twitter and Facebook as misinformation. Mm hmm. One year later, 2021, New York Times and Washington Post said, oh, no, that was real. <laughs> oh, hey, did you guys know about this? Yeah, we knew about it for a year. You told us we were assholes. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's stuff like that. Like I, it, That's only two examples. There's a bunch of other stuff. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Especially during the last two years. Oh, well, it, this is right. Just full of them for yeah, the last it, two years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I, I think the last two years it's never been so blatant, you right. know, and I, you know, I look at it and I just, I think, and now you've got the Ukraine thing with sending all the money over there, and it's, um, it's just so overt. It's like they don't even pretend they don't even pretend to hide it anymore. No, well, um, I mean, and how like the Ukraine money's tied into the FD, the FTX scandal, yeah, or how FTX funneled money to. Yeah, uh, the guy who ran FTX was Sam Bankman Fried, or SBF for all you hipsters. <laughs> well, his mom and his dad run two Democrat um, po PACs, political action yeah. campaigns. He was literally taking the money from FTX and funneling it into the, the his parents' Democrat PACs, <laughs> which were then putting it into the pol pol the politics. Yeah. Well, then you've also got the whole Ukraine thing where money's going to Ukraine. It was going through FTX and going to... So the, like the money's going from the U.S. government to Ukraine, to FTX, to his parents' uh, political campaigns. Yeah. Political action camp... Uh, whatever they call it. Political action committees. Yeah. And then back into the politics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like... It, it, was, it was literally like a self... A taxpayer-funded bank account. Yeah. But... Of course, everyone's like, well, we don't have the smoking gun. Well, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're right. I'm a conspiracy. That's what it is. And, you know, for all I know, it might be. And if it turns out to be, I will be the first to admit it was a conspiracy. But see, conspiracies not, are not always crazy. No. You know, if if you and I conspire to rob a bank, yeah. we're, and then someone says, hey, you know, they're conspiring to rob a bank. You're a conspiracy theorist. You, you are, and you're correct. Mm -hmm. Just because it's a conspiracy doesn't mean it's bad or, well, or crazy. Well, I mean, like, like that Wuhan lab theory. Yeah. That was labeled a conspiracy theory. Yeah. That turned out to be true. And they said it came from a pangolin or a or a bat. They or, a bat from a, uh, what, an open air? Yeah, uh, a wet market. Wet market. That's where it came from. Yeah. Uh, but it didn't, right? And... You had a, you had an unelected official lying to members of Congress, mm -hmm. saying that our government never funded this kind of research when it did. Yeah, in that lab specifically. Yep. And 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 when the emails came out to prove it, the people that were in that camp either just wouldn't admit they got duped. Mm hmm. Like, they literally said, well, that doesn't prove anything. What do you mean that doesn't? His, like, there's little emails between him, and, and there's a paper trail and a money trail. Yeah. From the from his department within the NIH. Like, that's a paper trail. Yeah. 
with communications to back it up that they funded this. Like, just be honest with it. Yeah. Nobody, I, <coughs> nobody's going to care. I would love to see emails about this F and P, all this, re- this, I would love to see what sort of stuff is out there. You you want to see the one email from the person saying, hey, I know this is screwing the kids, but let's get that cash. Yeah. Because someone had to have said this. Oh, some, and someone was dumb enough to put it in an email. Yep. Yeah. So I just, I would love to see that, or if it'll ever develop. Um, you know, but th- there's really easy ways. If you're to come out and say, hey, this is crap, you're, an- you're anti-teacher. Yep. Um, because that's the, what they love to throw out there. Uh, <clears throat> they'll just throw a label on you to shut you up. Or like when they, like when they talk about teachers teaching sexuality <clears throat> to elementary yeah, school. Yeah, you're kids. a bigot. You're a bigot. You're, you're, trans- you're anti-teacher. They're not do or, or just flat out, they're not doing that. Yeah. Okay. Then you obviously haven't gone on TikTok and seen the teachers in the schools admitting that they do it. Yeah. They get Telling <laughs> other teachers how to get around the policies and say they can't do it. Yeah. It, you literally find people admitting to this. Yeah. Like you can find your information from the people doing it if you look. Well, it's like everyone gets so fired up about libs of TikTok. Yeah. All that, all, and it's a, it's a she, they outed her. Um, yeah. She's, apparently she's a, a, an Orthodox Jew. And she, all she does is repost what these guys are saying. Right. That's all she's doing. None of it's made up. It's not like they're making characters up and have them come on and act ridiculous. Like all they do is go out there and they find these people and they post what they're saying. She links to their TikTok. Yeah. Like literally she, all she does is click share and puts it on her Twitter timeline. Yeah. She doesn't doctor it. Barely adds any commentary. Mm-hmm. And they, they're just, they out themselves. Yeah. And like the other say, oh, you don't think we're doing this to, we're not, we're not teaching this to kids? Yeah. But we are. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and they think, the, I mean, and TikTok definitely has a, a liberal bias. <coughs> so they don't think anyone's going to find it. And people find it and they put it out there. I mean, it, it was funny. Not that, not that I'm a Trump fan, but do you remember was it three years ago, Trump was saying that TikTok was like spying on people and mm-hmm. it should ban TikTok. And they said, he's a fascist. He's he's gonna censor people. He's censoring people. He doesn't want people yeah. to have free. He doesn't want people to have these apps. Well, you want to know what, know what Congress is about to do? Ban it. About the uh, the the Democrat controlled Congress mm-hmm. and Senate included is about to ban TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know the state just the state of Maryland just banned it from any state yeah. device. Yeah. So if federal, you have like federal a, government did too. Yeah. If you have a yeah. cell phone or whatever you can. Now it's funny. My personal phone. Um, I never put TikTok on the phone. Me either. But the app was on the phone. Oh, was it? Yeah. That's so I deleted it. Huh. Um, I hate it. And TikTok's interesting because the Chinese version of TikTok's called something else, but it's the same company. Is it Weibo? Yeah. And then, like, if you're under 14, it shows videos of like about science about history about patriotism about all this you know for uh for boys it shows like you know how to be a how to be masculine how to be a man like but here it's all just straight garbage it's 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 essentially a you know they're mainlining poison into the kids heads yep so um a little off a little off topic but yeah a little bit we're about we're over an hour on this one we thought we would have been though. We we knew this was gonna be. I I was I knew I was gonna get a little bit heated on this one. Um. I I guess I I just recommend if you if you listen to this all the way through. <coughs> I definitely recommend you just listen. It's a six part series called "Soul to Story" by Emily Hanford, and I believe Chris. Uh, she mentioned someone Chris Peak also helped her with this. Yeah. It, it, it has a NPR feel to it. it. It's it's by some group like that's an NPR. Tech it's group. national public media or something. I yeah. forget what it is, but it definitely when you listen to it, you're like, is this an NPR story on the radio? Like it sounds like that. 
Um, it's not anti-teacher. No. It, it just goes into the facts of this situation. And if you if you happen to have kids that are having trouble reading or have ever mentioned about looking at the picture or they as they're reading to you, it looks like they're not sounding out the, a word that's even there or they're not even sounding out words or whatever. It could be because of this Fontas and Pinnell system or something from Lucy Calkins or... Or, or if, you, if you hear that your kid's getting an FMP score, that's, they're definitely using the program in your kid's school. I, I just recommend you listen to this podcast. It's a quick hit. <coughs> like, like Mike said, it's maybe 30 minutes, 40 most for an episode for all six of them. Um, yeah, I think the longest one was the last one, which was like 43 minutes long. Yeah. Um, oh, and one more, like the, the uh, before I forget, the, the sight words. Yeah, yeah. So we had sheets of these sight words. So if you see your kids come back with these sheets of sight words right. that they have to memorize, read all the words. And what you'll see about the sight words, they're like prepositions, certain verbs. They're words that don't have pictures to them. So like with is a sight word. Yeah. There's no picture for with. Right. It's not like horse. Horse, right. you could, horse you could see a picture of. Right. But these words, now they're not taught to sound them out. And when I give them to my son and he'd read them, he would go... You know, he'd go through them, and it was just, he'd have to, like, you know, it is a sight word. I, A, they're sight words. Right. And they say, oh, it's words that you should be, you don't have to sound out, you just read, you just see them, and you know what they are. Well, okay, like, when I read, I read in chunks. Yeah. Like, I'll read, am I reading the entire the word individually? No, I'm reading the, the sentence, but I'm an experienced reader. I read quickly. Kids aren't doing this. That's okay. Oh, that's what that is. So they just see them and know what it is like a letter, but it's so because they call them sight words because they they're not there's no picture that goes with it. Yeah. So I, if you leave a comment if your if your kid uses you noticed your kid is using this or if your school is using this, leave us a comment down below. If you're on YouTube, um, shoot us a subscribe if you can like. The normal line is like, subscribe, comment, share. Any one of those will work. Definitely share this one. Of all the episodes we've done, this is the one to share, or at least share uh, the podcast Soul to Story, so that as many parents um, that you know with young kids, uh, just just have the knowledge of what that podcast was putting out there. It's um, look, I, I'm no brain surgeon. Uh, my wife is the one that told me that I should listen to it. And she, you know, she knows I'm not too into like academic podcasts. Most of the podcasts she recommends to me, I just think are a snooze. <laughs> <laughs> but smash that snooze button, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, or, or I think the the person she's listening to is just horrendous, right? But this one she recommended to me. She's like, you'll know exactly why I recommended it to you. You know, based on how our kids were reading, and and she was right, and I was pissed. I mean, it's kind of like when when we were talking about that uh, that show Dope Sick, right? When when it outlined the Purdue Pharma scandal with OxyContin, it pisses you off that people are doing this, yeah, and getting away with it, and most times they're aided by our government. Mm-hmm. And like that's the thing that pisses me off the most. I expect companies to do it. I don't expect the government to be in bed with them. Yeah, it's the, they, they should have my kids' best interest at heart, and they don't. They have their own pockets at, at interest. That's someone. Yeah, someone got someone is getting paid from this. Yeah, and their greed is leading to my kid not being able to read, and that's where I have a problem. Is that old? Is that old mob analogy? I don't care if the mob's making money. But you got to leave the neighborhood some crumbs. Mm -hmm. Stop screwing your neighborhood over. Yeah. Do right by your neighborhood and your neighborhood's not going to snitch on you. But they ain't doing that. Yep. The mob is screwing screwing the neighborhood over. Yep. And we're the neighborhood and the mob is the government and the big companies. Well, I I, I, I don't remember the dude's name. I follow him on Instagram and he, you know, he's always going against the, you know, the powers of being the government and he goes and he'll show these videos and he'll say remember these people hate you and that's the way it feels like they hate you they just that you, all you are is just money to them you're a paycheck to them. yeah that's exactly 
By the way, thank you to Cheers and Spirits Liquor Store. They, oh, they don't hate you. They don't they hate like you. you. They love you. <laughs> um, I, I hope they don't mind that uh, this is one of the episodes that they were a sponsor of. <laughs> this is probably not what they thought they were signing up for. <laughs> but think of it this way. After this podcast and after you listen to Soul the Story, you're going to need a drink. Yeah. So you might as well go to Cheers and Spirits <laughs> in the Arnold Station <laughs> Plaza, and you might as well go get yourself something to wet your whistle. Because remember, your throat was dry. You're not drinking it. You're you're just, you're just uh, moistening your throat, mm-hmm. <laughs> like Dr. Yeah. Anthony Fauci. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.